Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of ABG News. My name is Oli Sinube uh, and I'm here hoping that you have a wonderful start to your weekend. I mean to your week rather. Still weekend then over anyway. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and you are looking forward to a wonderful week ahead. Uh, I'm here to talk about uh, a report, a worrying report that uh, we are getting. You know that this is a channel that looks at uh, the whole of the African continent. We also look at the human rights situation all over the world. Uh, and the first uh, incident that we have uh, is stems from a report from Human Rights Watch. Human Rights Watch is an international organizations, uh, organization which looks at or documents incidences of human rights. It also safeguards human rights internationally. So they've got a, a, a report which they uh, released during the weekend or earlier today. Uh, it's re uh, titled Rap Rabba Massacre Reverberates 10 Years Later. And here uh, it talks about 10 years or the 10th anniversary of the Rapa massacre and here it says uh, it uh, talks about the continuing deepened repression and pervasive impunity uh, in this country which is Egypt you know Egypt is a North African country and this report was uh, released on the 14th of August uh, it says Human Rights Watch says Egyptian authorities have failed for the past 10 years, which is a decade, to hold anyone uh, accountable for the largest mass killing in Egypt's modern history. So uh, the Rapa massacre uh, is a likely crime against humanity, which took place uh, in Cairo on August 14, 2013, and kick-started a mass repression campaign targeting government critics, precipitating one of Egypt's worst human rights crises in many decades. Uh, so they say that despite uh, overwhelming evidence compiled by Human Rights Watch and calls by the United Nations and the international human rights organizations for investigation, the authorities in Egypt have failed to investigate or prosecute anyone for the killing of hundreds uh, of protesters that day. Security forces violently dispersed uh, the sitting at Rapa al Atawaria. The main gathering of protesters demanding the reinstatement uh, of the then president Mohammed Morsi, you know about the, the Arab Spring. Many, uh, then they say, hundreds of protesters who participated in the sit in remain in prison even today, convicted in grossly unfair mass trials, and some have been sentenced to death. Many others fled into exile. And then they released, that is Human Rights Watch, a, a video uh, with him. Uh, of uh, some of these incidences with speaking to some of the people that were affected by this uh, massacre one way or the other. So we'll leave you watching that video, hoping that you will also uh, comment underneath, uh, like this video and also share it. Thank you very much. You can now watch the video. It was a bloody day, a dark day, the darkest day in Egyptian modern history. المناظر دي مأثرة فيا لحد دلوقتي ومأثرة في نفسيتي مش قادر أتعامل لما بسمعه النهاردة بعد عشر سنين عشان نتكلم بواقعي أنا بحس إنه روحي بتطلع The sky was the limit for people's dreams about social justice, about a better life, about the future of Egypt in 2011, Egypt was setting out on a path towards democracy. President Mubarak was forced out by popular protests after 30 years in power, and Egyptians were hoping to turn the page on decades of oppression. What followed was Egypt's first free and fair election where Mohamed Morsi was elected president. These hopes were short-lived. In 2013, the military overthrew President Morsi in a coup, seizing on growing dissatisfaction with some of the new president's policies. After Morsi's fall, hundreds of thousands of his supporters and critics of the coup gathered at Rabaa and the Nahda squares in Cairo. I came to the 
وتنفيذا للديمقراطيه اللي احنا عشنا طول عمرها النادي بيها ونحلم بيها. For weeks, protesters occupied the two squares. Then, on the morning of August 14, 2013, Egyptian security forces started to clear the squares by force, opening fire on the protesters in a planned attack by top government officials. ما كناش نتخيل منها خالص ان هي تتعامل معانا بالقسوه ديت او بالعنف ده المفرط للقوه خارج اطار القانون. كميه الناس اللي ماتت في اليوم ده مرعبه جدا. Well over 800 people were killed at the two sites, making it one of the largest single day killings of demonstrators in recent history. فطبعا دي كانت نقطه تحول رهيبه جدا ان الجيش تحرك الجيش قضى على كل الحريات. اليوم ده لا يتنسى واليوم ده عمره ما هيتشال من ذكرياتنا وعمره ما هيتشال من التاريخ. مجزرة رابعة والنهضة كانت لحظة فارغة بالنسبة للمصريين. خدنا فترة على ما خرجنا منها وقدرنا ان احنا نكمل او نقول ان احنا محتاجين نكمل في طريق الحرية والمقامة في البلد. Hundreds of the protesters who were at the sit-ins have been convicted in unfair mass trials, resulting in dozens of death sentences and lengthy prison sentences. To this day, authorities have yet to prosecute security force officials or anyone responsible for the mass killings of protesters. The victims of the dispersals, their families, if they are dead, they have a right to see the officers and those who gave them the orders to shoot, to kill, also be brought to justice and be held accountable. They have right to be compensated. Since 2013, Egyptian authorities have arrested tens of thousands of people. Hundreds have been forcibly disappeared, tortured, or executed following unfair trials. أي حد يخرج عن عباية النظام أو يعارض النظام فبيبدأ اعتقاله وتخوينه. أنا تم اعتقالي في مصر بسبب نشاطاتي في الجامعة وبسبب خروجي في المظاهرات ترفض اللي حصل في رابعة العدوية تعرضت لكل أنواع التعذيب. Many people have been forced to flee Egypt for their safety. وصل لنا تهديد في المؤسسة إن إحنا نوقف عن ممارسة العمل الحقوقي. اضطريت أخرج برا مصر كلها عشان نكون إحنا صوت لهؤلاء المصريين أو الانتهاكات الموجودة. The sense of fear that spread like a shock wave across Egypt in 2013 after the dispersal of Rabaa and Nahda, like any shock wave, it gets absorbed. Uh, we lived with that trauma. Uh, and those shock waves, they stay in our mind. As this younger generation grows up, they come with a different perspective. They come without this trauma. The dominant strategy of everybody is to voice, then maybe we're gonna completely absorb and turn the tide of fear into a tide of hope and change.